when I changed myself, the world seemed to change pretty dramatically. We do have to understand that some of those linear interpretations or rules or seeming laws are there for us so we can have a more linear experience reflect to ourselves. If I can visualize me holding the cup and what that feels like, I am now shifting my in internal coordinates for consciousness to match an entire reality that implies everything that needs to occur for me to get to that point. Hey, Ventia. Hey. How's it going? Pretty chill. Oh, yeah, I like the line in the background. Nice. I had it before I knew you had it. Oh, perfect. It's, Great. it's amazing. Yeah. It's, it gives me power, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's a very cool picture. What can thanks I do for you today? For, th thanks for your teachings. And um, I, I really related to the previous question, the, the 23 deepening conviction. It's mm. only isness as isness. Amazing. Uh, I have a question about deliberate creation, and it's, I think it's all been said before by you, of course, but it will maybe help me, or it will probably help me, if you can maybe one time summarize how deliberate creation works, and is it about matching the frequency of a version of reality or a version of you that already exists? Is visualization about giving cues to reality or what is the mechanism can you maybe summarize that one more time yes everything exists every possibility exists from what like frames like pictures in the movie reel Shh. cut them all up paste them all around the room they all exist here now the end of the movie exists here now the beginning of the movie exists here now in the same room what we are attuned to, what we're looking at, will determine what we see, which time, which space, which condition, which frame. Now, multiply this by infinity, take it to depths of forever, and you'll still barely have a glimpse of the reality of it. Insane. Right? But that's in very simplistic form. That's the mechanism. Every frame, every possible configuration of subatomic illusory particles exists here now. Every version of reality, every version of the universe coexists here now. What, en what enlivens it, what animates it. A movie isn't animated until a camera you know, or the reel of pictures is put in a certain order and it passes through the lens or the light of the, the projector. The light of the projector is your consciousness. Right now, you're shifting through billions of parallel configurations of energy that form different forms and shapes and vibrations that the illusion of your senses is interpreting into sounds and visuals and so forth. So you have a picture, you have a feeling, you have this dreamlike experience. How that dreamlike experience moves and evolves, it's always moving, but it depends on where you place the projector light of your consciousness. If you are attuned to a particular storyline, if you're invested in it, if you're expecting it, if you believe in it, if you think that's the way that it is, then vibrationally, you are tying yourself to certain images that match that vibration, to certain dream images that match that quality of your attention or your will, your expectation. So this is the power of assuming something else to be true so that you shift your coordinates, your vibration of that projector light. So you will see a different area of possibilities, a different area in the room of here and now. To you, it will seem like it came after this and like it was like the world changed from picture A to picture B to picture C. And you can recognize, oh, this is a pretty dramatic shift. When I changed myself, the world seemed to change pretty dramatically. It seems like the world evolved, but really you just took yourself in typically quite a logical sense. It seems logical to the mind, typically how things unfold. It's like, oh, That's cool, that happened. Yeah. It yeah. has linearity and continuity in a, in a weird way. Well, that's in a sense designed that way to sustain the illusion. Otherwise, it would lose its functionality. Just like when you have a dream where it's just so free that suddenly you're in China, then you're on a different planet, then you're talking to your mom, and now you're making love to your future partner. And it's like when there's no cohesion, you cannot learn certain lessons. You cannot develop certain balances as a consciousness. You cannot self-realize and self-actualize in quite the same way without some limitation, structure, and linearity and logic. Yeah. So 
it's not a it's not a solid limitation we can transcend those boundaries we can create more breathing room we can dissolve some of the limitations but we do have to understand that some of those linear interpretations or rules or seeming laws are there for us so we can have a more linear experience reflected to ourselves which provides our consciousness with very specific lessons and balances and expansions but essentially the mechanism is to understand that everything already exists and then more specifically to your how questions visualization is simply a way for you to imagine a different reality when your light is still shining on picture a you're imagining picture b you're visualizing picture b you have an idea of what it could look like what it could feel like so you're picturing it you're feeling it you're imagining it if you do that it's not that you're creating that reality using visualization is that you're now feeding the projector light of your consciousness, the coordinates, the vibrational coordinates that it needs to be tuned into, the frequency it needs to resonate with. So that then the mechanism of which pictures run through its light can change. So you're not creating the reality you're going to shift into by visualizing it. You're giving yourself the coordinates. You're giving yourself symbols and feelings so that your consciousness can begin to resonate with that frequency, which then will shift you into the reality that already exists, the picture that already rests in that same eternal mansion of the here and now. The Lord's mansion has many rooms. Which room you enter depends on your vibration, your frequency, the coordinates, your state of being, what you assume is true, and so forth. Visualization is simply a tool to give to yourself to kind of overlap your desired picture on top of the picture that you've currently are witnessing so that you start to shift your vibration instead of just observe what seems to already be here physically and now we're because then we're looping our vibration we stay dialed into the same frequency we don't change so much therefore our reality doesn't seem to change too much to what we want yeah. but if we give ourselves a picture something tangible now the mind create sort of a resonating chamber around that symbol so that that consciousness that we are can begin to assume that state that feeling of that reality and that's what will shift us into perceiving that which already exists parallel to our current frame in the same here and now there's no space or time in this mansion but does it really matter what we then imagine or is it just about the frequency and on a soul level, we actually already have the path defined, so to speak? Uh, well, I'd say both. Yes, it does matter a little bit what we imagine, but it's not about what you're visualizing as much as it is about what that implies. Right? I could, I could picture, uh, let's say I want to win the Champions League in soccer. Now, I can picture, I don't want that, by the way, but let's say... <laughs> say i do really want that i feel like okay that's in my soul's path that's calling me forth mm, that's really like it's it's what i want to learn it's what i want to express it's what i want to engage with it's what i want to try now i can picture i can visualize me holding that cup or the trophy or i don't even know what it looks like i think it's a cup i can picture that now it's not about that picture it's about what me holding that cup implies to me what it feels like or what it implies well it's very closely connected what it implies is how i'll feel but it implies me holding the cup implies that i won the champions league or whatever league it means that you know so if i can visualize me holding the cup and what that feels like i am now shifting my in internal coordinates for consciousness to match an entire reality that implies everything that needs to occur for me to get to that point. So now I'm activating that journey. I'm activating that parallel timeline. But so you, you might as well become a, a great actor instead of that Champions League winner. Do you mean even in the case where you desire to be a Champions League winner? Yeah. You, you become and an it actor. Might, yeah. It might turn out that you become an actor. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why it's not about the image. Cool. It's about the feeling of accomplishment it's about the feeling of completion it's about the feeling of fulfillment it's about that feeling of ah, what my soul's calling forth for is already accomplished i have it i am it that's who i am now then yes it might throw you for a loop 
That's why it's important to not be too insistent upon what you think you want. Yeah. Because you don't know, in most cases, exactly what you want. You just know the symbols that comes closest, that you're translating that feeling of the wish fulfilled. It might be a totally different trajectory. Now, sometimes it's exactly the same or almost exactly the same, but often it will kind of detour you into something unexpected. But nevertheless, the end result is what you desire, and it is what is calling you forth. So the symbols, the visualizations, they're just the coordinates that help you tune into them. But it's more about what that implies, what that means must be true, what you assume, and therefore you will feel different. You will feel fulfilled if that imagination comes with a sense of, ah, this is who I am, and this is already accomplished, and this already exists. And now knowing, now having the conviction and faith that by attuning myself to that vibration, it has to show up might be in a slightly different fashion, might be exactly the same, might be slightly different, might be very different. But I know that what I truly desire will then come forth at an accelerated pace. Nice. And it doesn't matter if it's a, like Bashar says it also, I think Abraham even says it also, it doesn't matter if you're very specific, as long as you tune into that higher version of what you came here to do. Or does right. it matter? Yeah. It can yeah. matter in terms of it can make an additional difference, but it doesn't matter on the whole, and I wouldn't worry about it. Cool. I, I do like what Abraham says. Like, if you really are feeling good about your state and you are already convinced of it, then by all means, continue to specify it with no insistence. But if that makes it even more alive for you, if it makes it feel even more real for you, then you can do that. If it makes it feel farther away and like, Ah, oh, but if it has to be that specific, then uh, I'm not sure if I believe this particular aspect. Then back off, go back to the general feeling of the wish fulfilled or the destiny fulfilled or feeling that satisfaction as already here and now. So you don't want to get so swallowed up in the details that you become insistent and that you become stubborn and that you start to have resistance to it and you start to not believe in it. You want to keep it airy-fairy enough, general enough, breathable enough, faith-based, mystery-based enough yeah. where can, that sense, yeah. to where you can maintain at a healthy sort of steady pace a confident feeling of fulfillment. That is crucial. That is the most important thing. The specifics will come anyway. They will show up in your life and then you'll believe them. Yeah, but, I see things are being put in my way that I didn't, couldn't think yeah. of. It's kind of like this. If you're, tun if you're tuning into, if you're in your car and you want to you want to hear jazz that will fulfill you. Now, you don't know exactly what song is going to play, no. but you do know the coordinates to the jazz channel. Yeah. You're not going to go to the blues channel or the hip hop channel. You're going to go to the jazz channel. Now, then you'll be surprised. It might look different. It may be a song you didn't expect or that you don't even know yet, but you do know the vibe you're going for. That's kind of very similar to this. Now, you can get more specific. You can start a Spotify account and look up exactly the song you want to hear. And sometimes that's delicious to do. But if you get too insistent while you're still just kind of driving in your car and you cannot control what they play over the radio, you're not at that level with that particular topic in your life, it's much better to just turn on the jazz station. At least you know you'll be satisfied. Now, from there, it'll open up new avenues to download a Spotify account and remember the exact song you were looking for. But that will come. Makes sense. In other words, it's, it's better to tune into the jazz station and let it surprise you and let it yeah. satisfy you than it is to have the specific song in mind, not know what it is. And because yeah, you're I mean, so worried you're about it, it you're like, uh, 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 and you're hearing all these fragmented songs and then you're on the hip hop channel again. It's better to just tune into what you do know feels good. What you do know is the general direction and anchor in that vibration of fulfillment. Makes a lot of sense. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, great question.